Welcome back to Coding Goblin and welcome back to another video of my face. When I was 13 or 14, I thought I was a really good singer. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, but at the same time, there's something hugely wrong with this. Now, although I thought I was a really good singer, I had never sung out loud before. Never. So that's just bizarre. But the point is, in my head, I thought I was a good singer because the voice in my head sounded really good. Great logic, hey? So one day I thought to myself, I'm going to record myself singing and I'm going to listen to it back and I'm going to prove to myself that I am an amazing singer. And I recorded myself singing on my little MP3 player like we all used to have and I sang a song by The Killers um, the one that goes is here doesn't look a thing like Jesus uh, and it sounded a bit like that when I listened to it back horrific and it burst my bubble and I was just like oh wow and it really made me realize how much I overrated myself on things that I didn't even have a clue if I'd be good at because I'd never actually done them before but I just assumed that they were easy to do and that I was good at doing it now, if you fast forward to current day or a few years back, I was still doing similar things. And I basically thought that the hard part of building a website was coding and the easy part was writing the copy, writing the actual text and content for the website. But what you realize is the hard part of anything is the thing that you haven't put any effort or time in to learn. So if you've spent years learning to code a website, of course that's the easy part of making a website. Of course it is, the coding, because that's what you've spent so many hours doing. And then when you come to writing the copy, you might be a bit stumped because guess what? You spent so much time coding that you didn't put any time into developing the skill of writing and writing website copy specifically because that's not just the skill of writing that is a specific type of writing so I've found myself in this situation quite a few times with this specific example of the website copy because it's not fun if you're a web developer if that's not what your passion is you don't enjoy it necessarily and I've done this a few times well a lot of times actually where I've spent a long time building a website coding a website because I enjoy that process too long might I add I spent too long when I should have banged it out in a couple of days and I've done it in a couple of months but that's a different story and you finish the website or you think you finish a website I don't know if you ever truly finish a website maybe that's just me and you come to write in the copy and your mind goes blank and you because before that you thought to yourself Ah, oh, okay, hard work's done. Now I've just got to bang some text in. But it's not a case of just banging some text in. Because the website copy is the most important part of the website. If you think about what a website's purpose is, generally, if we're talking about a marketing website, it's to attract visitors and get traffic to it. Now, what's going to do that? It's the website coffee. Coffee? Oh, I do fancy a coffee. It's the website copy. So that's what's going to get indexed in Google. That's what's going to keep people reading. That's what's going to draw people in. But for some reason, as web developers, not all web developers, obviously, some aren't complete morons like me, but the moronic ones like me and possibly you, possibly you, um, we don't put enough time and effort into it. And it's a real shame because you spend so much time building something that could be great and then you bodge the last bit, the most important bit, which is entering your text or writing your text. So what I decided to do was spend a bit of time developing that skill and hone the skill of writing and writing website coffee. And it pays off a lot. If you flip your focus from coding to actual content, you're going to see your websites improve massively. You're going to see huge growth in the traffic to your websites. So this depends on what type of business you're in or what type of web developer you are. If you're self-employed, if you're doing 
literally the whole website or if you're actually a, a real developer I'm not a real developer I guess because I just do stupid videos on YouTube but um, if you're an actual developer your job role is back end developer or front end developer then obviously that's what you focus on you're not probably expected to even get involved in the copy but if you're someone like me who makes websites completely from start to finish and they're your own websites and I'm assuming most of you do have your own websites even if you are specifically a front end or back end developer but if you do that you're going to want to hone those skills you're going to want to put a bit of time in and if you do have websites existing websites where you know the content isn't that good and you're wondering to yourself I've got this really nice website why doesn't it get any traffic then maybe go back and just write the copy from scratch not from scratch you maybe want to if it's indexed in Google maybe don't write it from scratch but add a lot of copy to it make it good make it something that people actually want to read and something that's engaging and it's a it's a little bit like with these YouTube videos I used to put no charisma in I used to it was because I was awkward and shy and felt self-conscious but like I said previously if you see my first videos I'm barely showing any sort of emotion or I'm not animated and I'm not myself I'm not being myself because I'm like a shell of myself because I feel so awkward and it really comes across and it's not enjoyable to watch not for me anyway apparently it is for some people because it's my early videos get so many views. I don't understand that. Weird. But, um, yeah, it's an important lesson. To get better at anything, you need to actually do it. So if you think you're a good singer and you've never even sung out loud before, that was the thing. I'd sung in my head, obviously. Obviously, I sung in my head. But I had never sung out loud, which is quite funny. It really is. And when I, <laughs> when I, when I listened to it back, like, my heart broke. I, I I genuinely thought I was a really good singer. I, I I this is not an exaggeration and I think this maybe tells you a little bit about me and my mindset more than anything. I used to be ter- terrible for this. I used to think I was amazing at everything and obviously I wasn't. Um sorry if you can hear that rain by the way. I don't know how noisy that is on the camera. But um my my heart broke when I when I listened back to that. It was pretty horrific, pretty horrific. Also, I think it was actually quite a hard song to sing. When I think about it, I think that the guy from the Killers has actually got a really good voice, so it's quite hard to do that, especially if you've never sung out loud before. But here's what I've realised, and I'm going to use the singing example again. If I did ten years of singing lessons. I'd be good at singing. Like I might not I might not be famous, I might not be the best singer ever, but you would just be good at it because you've honed that skill. Like it doesn't matter, you would get good at it. It's not it's one of those things where I think especially with stuff like that. It's a bad example for this channel, but it's it's because I did it. But with stuff like that, we we I think we have a lot of limiting beliefs. I think it's like drilled into us. Like with singing, learning instruments, maybe even coding to a certain extent, but people are told from a young age that you either have that or you don't have it. So, oh, you're either, you can either sing or you can't sing. Oh, it's a gift. It's a gift. And it's not true. It's not true. You can learn how to do anything. It's so, so true. And even that whole idea of, oh, I want to learn guitar, but you've got to learn when you're young. You have to. If you don't start young, you're never going to get to any sort of, standard nonsense it's absolute nonsense you think your brain just stops working (laughs) when you get a little bit older of course not it's not true at all it's not true at all i'm sure there'll be an advantage to starting like starting young i'm not saying that it's not ideal to start younger but don't hold yourself back from doing things just because you didn't start when you were young or just because you think you're not good at it now because the more you do something, the better you're going to get. I promise you. I promise you. Look at me. Look at my first video. Look at my recent videos. 
Do you think I'm worse at talking on camera or am I better at talking on camera? I'm better. So with coding as well, anyone can learn to code. I don't care. I don't care what you say. I don't care if you think, oh, I'm not, I'm not good at maths. Don't need to be. I promise you, you don't need to be. Unless you're doing a very specific type of coding where maths is really important. You do not use maths barely at all. Like, if you're making a website, you don't use maths. If you're making a marketing website, you're not using maths. So that's a, um, that's a myth. I hear people say, oh, you need to be good at maths to be good at coding. No, you don't. It will help you in certain areas. So limiting beliefs, dangerous. They're very dangerous. But also the opposite of a limiting belief is what I had when I thought I could sing overconfidence when I hadn't actually tried something. That's also dangerous. You see that when you watch programs like X Factor or whatever they might be. People that have clearly been told you're an amazing singer and they're not. So it's quite funny as well. Anyway, do all that YouTube stuff. Can you leave a comment? Leave a comment of a time where either you thought you were really good at something that you'd never done before and then you got humbled or a time where you weren't good at something and then you practiced it and then you became good at something or okay at something. Let me know. Be interested to know. Thanks for watching. Do all that YouTube stuff. As I said, like the video, subscribe to the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. The end.